This is a video about the Canon 514XL Super 8 camera. I could not find any information on how to disassemble this camera or any adjustments with this camera online, so I decided to just figure it out for myself. So I'm making this video for anybody else who has the same issues. So I've already disassembled this, all the screws are gone, but I'm gonna walk you through what you need to do to be able to take it apart. So there's two sides, this side, the kind of front, and this side, the back. The issue that I had with this camera was the meter reading was wrong, and it turns out if you have the same issue, you don't actually need to disassemble nearly as much as I did. Um, you can adjust it from here and here. So these are the two meter adjustments. The top one is offset and the bottom one is gain. Offset is about plus minus one stop. So if you move it this way, it decreases the exposure, increasing the f-stop. And if you move the little knob this way, it increases the exposure or decreases the f-stop. The bottom one is gain, which in my indoor lighting has about three stops of travel. And this way is increasing the exposure. This way is decreasing the exposure. So to take apart the camera, you need to remove three pieces of leather. This piece, this piece, this piece. So here they are. One, two, three. I used the heat from a hairdryer to aid in removing the adhesive, and most of it came off pretty cleanly. I'm not aware of anybody who makes replacement leather for this, so you're going to need to preserve these if you want to keep your camera looking intact. Most of the body is held together with these shoulder screws, which is kind of an in interesting choice. You have a shoulder screw here, shoulder screw here, shoulder screw here. There is another screw on the front here, so on these two, you actually only need to take apart one. You only need to take one of these screws out. It doesn't matter which one. Down here, there is a black metal plate that again is glued on here like that. So you need to heat that up and remove the adhesive. And there's another two screws underneath here. So after you have all the screws for the top plate off, it, uh, it comes off like this. Make sure to make note of where the self timer is. I had an issue where my self timer slipped and got about 90 degrees this way in the wrong way and I had to finagle it back to the correct position. So here we can kind of see the inner workings of the camera. This is the power switch here. This switch right there is doing the main power. Um, and if we turn the camera off, cause it's been on, we can see the switch disconnects. This switch right here runs the motor. So when you pull the trigger, that switch is connected. And at the same time, it also removes this little interlock, which allows the motor to turn. This switch right here is for the self timer. So when the self timer is running, this switch is closed. The self timer mechanically times itself using the motor timing. So the self timer winds up like this. When it goes, it runs like this. So first there's the mechanical timer down here that's covered by this brass plate. And then once that timer ends, it goes into running mode. And the running mode is determined by this little cam um, right there. And when that ends, the self timer stops. So that's how the self timer works. I didn't take apart any of this mechanism deeper here. So I don't have any comment on that. And this is the battery check light here. So when you press on that, you can see the LED lights up. You can see the meter wheel um, kind of in front of the LED, super delicate, so be careful in there. So that is the front of the camera. After you've removed the leather here, you need to do one, two, three of the shoulder screws and, and this screw down here. And then if you've removed one of these on the front, you don't need to remove another one. Pull it off like this. This one can be a little tricky to put back in. Oh, you'll also need to remove the strap from the strap lug here. You'll notice the door is now free because there's nothing to hold the door in anymore. This is the meter circuit board. So you can see again, the uh, offset and the gain trimmer potentiometers. Right here, this is the 18 versus nine FPS lever. This little copper guy goes up and switches an ND filter in front of the meter. The ND filter changes the exposure between 18 and nine frames per second. These two are the cartridge notch sensors. This bottom one changes it by about a third of a stop and this top one changes it by um, more than a stop. This will change it down to 25 ISO for daylight 
daylight film. And this one will change it to 100 for daylight film. Down here is the tungsten cartridge notch. When you push this in, you'll notice it does two things. This right here is the color correction filter. So pushing in on this notch moves the color correction filter out of the way. And you'll notice over here, it also moves an ND filter in front of the meter. So this is a different ND filter then the frame rate ND filter, there are two ND filters that go in front of the meter, one for the tungsten and one for the frame rate. I have not disassembled any further than this. Um, you can kind of see, you know, the, the shutter operating in there. Um, I have not disassembled any further, so that's, uh, that's all I can say here. One more thing, for whatever reason, if you need to get to the actual light sensor, it's underneath this plate. To get into this plate, you first pry off the name plate, which again is glued on right here, and then there's one screw right there, and then there's another screw on the top here, and then you can take off this and the light sensor, which is a CDS cell or light dependent resistor is right under here and you can see the wires. And you can also watch the ND filters operate. Hopefully this video is helpful to anybody else who has issues with their Canon 514. Hopefully maybe some pictures and video of a, a working one will help you in your quest to fix your camera. All right.